Hey guys, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. Today's video is going to look in a little bit of depth concerning the grid in studio and the positioning tools that are available to us for some fine tuning details where the automatic built-in connections don't necessarily play as nicely as we would like them to. So uh, the example I have pulled up is a recolored version of Green Grocer. And I built this model while I was working on my um, Green Grocer build project. And I wanted to redo all of the bricks in the walls to be able to use the sand green that I did have. So that's a different set of videos, but I bring this into this video because part of this project involved placing the apples and the cherries in these boxes up front. And I know I didn't have to do this um, just for what I was doing, just for the sake of being more faithful to the official model, I actually used some tools that Studio has to place these items in the boxes. Uh, because as you might guess, these apples, uh, they only have one connection point on the bar. And so this bar of the apple can connect. So the apple does have a connection point. Um, it's the 3.18 millimeter bar connection point, but it doesn't have anything that would help us get it into this box at all. Um, in this case, what you have to do is there's actually a way to position parts manually. And to do this, you're gonna wanna hover over the part actually click the part and then hover over this little hand right here. This will give you two options. You can click on the first option where your mouse is already pointing. This is the rotation tool. So this is just a shortcut way to get into your standard rotation tool that does what we've seen before. Um, very similar to the hinge tool. In fact, it does the same thing in this case because the part is not actually connected to anything. So it's just going to rotate about its own internal axis. But if you hover over, you'll also see this three, 3D axis move tool pop up. And this is what I wanna talk about today. So if you click on the move tool, that's going to give you these three vectors. And I'm assuming these vectors are pointing in the positive direction for their respective coordinates. These are also locked to the um, reference point of the part and not of the main model. So as you can see, this apple is actually turned a little bit and I'm gonna turn it a little more just so we can see it a little better. Go back into this move tool. So these axes will point in the angle that the part is pointing in. It's not locked to um, the main axis of say something like this that's already aligned with the grid. This is going to move in line with the rest of the grid in studio. The base grid that it gives you here um, to place the parts down already kind of pre-aligned to everything else. But if you wanna really fine tune things, you can have this kind of angled where you need it to go and then you can use these um, moving points to drag it around a little bit. So. To highlight these features a little better, I have a small grid over here that we're gonna look at. And to see this, I'm going to use our orthogonal, there we go. So that's just gonna give us a really you know, head-on view of this apple. So there's a few things I wanna mention about this tool. Uh, like I have already mentioned, you're gonna click and drag when you want to move something around, but as you can see, it kind of it's it's kind of jumpy, so it's not very granular at the moment. Um, but you actually have control over this if you use the grid here. Um, I'm not sure what the default is for Studio. It, it might actually open on this course grid as the default, and when you have this set to course, you're actually going to be moving the item in increments of one brick in length and one brick in height. The Lego brick ratio is not one to one; it's actually five to six, and so for every five units that you move it along the length, it's actually going to move six units along the height. But what's nice about this tool is it's kind of baked into the moving features where if you need to align something to the part grid, it's already going to give you that ratio. And so you don't need to worry about moving something um, along one length where it's moving five units and then um, you have to change that and do the math to do it the other way. So this course grid is going to give you that five to six ratio as long as this part is already aligned. Actually, something I'm curious about now is if I rotate this part, is it going to treat it like 
it's on a different grid and move it. Oops, didn't want to do that. Yeah, so now it's going to treat moving it this way as if it's moving along uh, its base axis. And so this is actually going to move it that five units instead of the six vertical units. So again, if you do need that kind of fine-tuned positioning, that is an option. Put that back. Um, the other thing you might have noticed already is it, it gives you some numbers here. And these numbers are in reference to an origin point of the build. So if I actually edit these and set them all at zero, it's just going to show me where the origin point is for this model. And in this case, it looks like it's right in the middle of this base plate over here. Um, and this is something that as soon as you start putting bricks in a model in studio, this is kind of already a predefined location. And so if you are really concerned about having things aligned using these numbers, you're actually going to want to set your first couple of bricks at this zero, zero point and kind of build up from there. Everything, pretty much everything I've done in studio is relative to the first couple parts, but not necessarily relative to the origin point itself. And so that isn't necessarily something that I would say you need to be really concerned about unless you are going to be using those numbers a lot. I think we have enough control with our grid options that you don't need to use them unless there's a re really, really just minute detail that you need to go in and change these to the 10th uh, of the decimal here and get that perfectly aligned with something. But as you will see, we actually have some more fine tune options in our grid. So let's go up to this medium here. And this is the one I usually build with. I, f I find it's a good uh, middle point between, you know, not going too coarse on the one to one ratio, but also not too fine to where you can still move stuff with relative positioning and not, not go crazy. So this is pretty much divided our movement in half. As you can see, as we drag this along now, we're going in increments of a half stud lengthwise and a half brick vertically. Um, and what's interesting is tiles or plates uh, are a third of a brick in height. And so to move a full brick, you need to put three plates on top of each other. Um, but since we're moving in increments of one half, that's going to put us right in the middle of the center tile. Uh, and once again, that five to six ratio comes into play these are just going to be uh, that increment of two in this case because you'll have two, four, six for every brick tall. Um, and that half would then be three units. So two plus half of two is three. And that's where that um, medium grid is at. Something that I came across while I was looking at the help page for this grid is that there's a second option here called medium plate. And this is basically the same as medium except it's going to give you that plate separation instead of the half brick separation. So let's change this over to plate. And now when we move this vertically, we should see that it actually goes in increments of a third of a brick or in line with the stacked plates. So that can be really helpful if you are positioning things on top of plates or on tiles. And then we have one more level here called fine. And this one is not as intuitive as the, the whole step and the half step. Um, it almost seems somewhat arbitrary at first as you're sliding it along. Uh, the fine option is really good for just almost continuous level movement. You can you pretty much place it wherever you want on the grid. As you keep an eye on these numbers, you'll see that we'll be moving in solid increments. And so this 0.7 decimal is staying the same. And we're moving in steps of one for the whole number step there. And also vertically on our center one here. So pulling up the help center page again, we can see that the fine steps are using the LDU, which is an L draw unit. This goes back to some of the um, fan developed things in the early days of digital builders. But basically uh, it sets one stud equal to 20 units. The height of a brick is 24. And so a plate is a third of that or eight. And that's what units this is using um, to move along the grid now that we are in the fine tune option. Once again, we have the option to directly edit here. And so if we do need to go even finer detail, we can just use this point 
positioning and directly enter it in. So let's say I want to have this right at negative 95. That's going to give me that exact number. And I haven't checked to see if you can do to the hundredths. So let's do negative 95.55. Nope, it's going to round it for me. So you can only go to the tenth of an LDU. But still, an LDU, a draw unit, is a twentieth of a brick. And so you're actually getting another uh, another decimal place out of that movement when you directly edit these positions. So I'm going to move it back to the medium detail. That's really all I've ever needed to use unless I'm doing something really crazy detailed, in which case uh, I do pull that out every once in a while. So what are the applications for this? Well. The first one that I already mentioned was for putting stuff in this box where it doesn't have a connection point. Um, but as you work with Studio, you may come across things that should have a connection point, but they don't. And so one thing a lot of people use Studio for is to generate building instructions for a mock. And you can build your mock in the digital bricks here. And then there is a very nice instruction maker built into Studio. That is a topic for another day. but. Uh, let's say that you have a, a project that uses this connection, which is now legal. These new clips, uh, they have enough flex to accept a tile in on the inside of that clip. Um, and so you actually see this in official LEGO sets now. Uh, at one point, there was a version of this clip that it was not allowed by the LEGO group to do this. A lot of people still... Uh, use this technique in their mocks, but for the Lego group it was considered an illegal technique because it put too much stress on the part. Um, but this part has been updated and so this is something that we see in official sets now, but it has not made its way into the studio functionality. And so if you come in here with this tile and you want to try to put it in like you would see it in a set or in a um, in a mock, you can kind of get it close with just the, the default placement option, but as you can see it's not perfectly aligned. And so that's something where you would want to come in with this move tool and give it that exact positioning. We're going to have to jump down to the fine fine tune detail here to get this right. Um, but there there you go. You can um, you can use that move tool to put it right where you want it vertically and horizontally. And then from here, you know if it needs to have that little bit of rotation in it, you can do that. Just keep in mind, when you rotate a part, these, these axes are going to follow with it. And so every time you add this rotation into the mix, that's something you're going to have to keep track of in terms of how you are going to be moving this in the future. And so I would recommend um, doing all of the placement that you can when the axes are aligned to the build. So it's just more uh, direct in terms of where you're putting it and then try to add in that rotation component later so that any fine details you need to do to get it perfectly aligned are, are a little easier on um, just the, the input side. And following that part grid might get a little bit convoluted, especially if you have multiple um, points of rotation added in. By the time you've got a couple more of these, you know, you're pointing in a completely different direction from where you started. So. There is a little bit of information about the grid and the move tool on Studio, some examples of how to edit it and change it using the grid, and an application example um, for some of the connection points that are not quite available built into our parts in our software yet. Most of the parts that you're going to be building with, they're, they're automatically going to snap where they can. Um, and so that's what you see here is this jumping around on the base plate that's trying to grab onto a stud where the, the software knows it can go. And similarly, all of these bar connections, they already have the information built in as well. So it's going to try to grab onto that. Um, but something like this, where at one point it was actually considered not allowed to build like this because it put too much stress on the element, that might not be already part of the information that is in the software and it knows how to do that intuitively. And it's something you're going to have to do manually to get what you want out of the positioning. So thanks for watching today, guys. A little bit of guidance on that specific aspect of this pretty great software. It has its drawbacks, it has its limitations, but all in all, I think it's a very good piece of equipment for your digital building arsenal. Thanks for watching Brick System Brothers. We'll see you next time.